backtrack about a year or so ago when when the pandemic hit and kind of threw the world into chaos um you know i'm sure there was a brief time where you guys were just kind of where everything kind of shut down but you know what was it like for your company you know when COVID hit and you kind of realized you had to shift a bit to the to this virtual world what was going on well it was a scary moment and it took us probably two or three weeks to realize it was a real moment um that this was going to be more than just a hiccup in in things in a in a month away in month opportunity so we we struggled um like everybody in our business did really wrapping our heads around what to do um after that kind of first month we took the first month month and a half to do a lot of of um continued education you know that time we we, we knew we wanted to keep everybody employed um as long as we could because um, so many of our our partner companies or or competitors furloughed right away so we really challenged our people you got to you got to find things to keep you busy and we have a great crew here and you know it's only about 10 people within our our company and organization mm -hmm. but everybody really buckled down but it took us about a month and a half to kind of realize we need to really step to the cliff and jump off in terms of the virtual event stuff. We are a, we are a video company by by trade, our history obviously being Creative Video of Washington, but outside of webcasting a lot of events and occasionally doing a remote call into a live event, mm -hmm. which was only a few times a year and always a struggle, we didn't live in this this realm, so but we had the tools to do it, you know. We've got great broadcast switchers. Um we you know robotic cameras. we got enough computers here to make this happen. So um, by kind of dumb luck, my wife was a teacher for a long time at a school in uh, in Crownsville, Maryland called Indian Creek Schools, private school. Um, and a number of her family members still work there. And I was having a conversation with them in the, about their commencement and, and so forth. And middle of the night, I woke up and I was like, you know what? I can pull this off because we were seeing so many people stepping forward. A lot of fly-by-night companies, people that lived in this realm um, and other event companies trying to come up with those virtual commencement ideas. And it was, you know, we'll put a picture of your student up with, you know, description and we'll announce their name. I was like, you know what? This school only had about 80 seniors. We're going to make sure every single one of them is live on camera to receive their diploma. You know, we're not going to let them speak, but, you know, they can wave and, and it, it's not taped. We're going to make all 80 of them cross the stage and uh, challenge the team. And we came up with an answer to that. It was really the first show we did completely internal. We had had one previous show to that where a company out of New York that we partner with a lot on webcasting at the Kennedy Center came down to do some virtual stuff on the back end for us. And we watched them and I was like, you know what? I think we can pull this off. We, we invested in a few tools, a, a lot of, you know, black magic converters that Okay. You know, we probably poo pooed six months before, but um, <laughs> we looked at the opportunity and said, okay, let's do this. And uh, we pulled it off on a Saturday. We had uh, 20, well, we had 12 computers set up. We had four people um, and we had two breakout rooms. We put the odd number and the even number. Um, we numbered everybody in odds and evens. And they were just pinning people full screen. And we kind of figured out the science behind it. And since then, um, we've, I want to say we mastered it because no one masters this. There's there's a million ways to pull this off. There's a lot of great companies, uh, a lot of them that you've talked to already. There's a million ways to do this stuff. Yeah. But I think we have found what works best for us with the tools that we have with our team and their knowledge base because we all had broadcast backgrounds. And mm -hmm. we treat it more as a broadcast side of things, um, going through a true broadcast switcher. Every show that we do, you know, there's a computer assigned to uh, a virtual uh, virtual presenter. So they're full screen. We've, you know, invested in enterprise accounts with Vimeo to make sure there's redundant webcasting because Vimeo didn't have that capability um, unless you pay for the enterprise. Uh, Zoom's become a good friend of ours. Yeah. Um, yeah, they've unlocked the full HD 1080 ca capacity for us because we've been doing so much with them. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a never ending learning session. Let me tell you that it's every day. There's a new challenge. You know, eventually somebody came to me and like, how do you, ca you know, we want to do closed captioning. 
Mm. And I've done plenty of closed captioning for broadcast, but how do we make this work remotely when a captioner doesn't want to come in? And we figured that out prompting, you know, slide remote slide mm. control. You know, it's all those questions that now everybody's figured out the answers to, but you know, it took a little work. <laughs>